In this video, we're going to look at a particular function, the function e to this rational function, e to x minus 3 divided by x minus 2. And what I want to accomplish by the end of this video is to analyze what are all the vertical asymptotes of this particular function and what are all the horizontal ones. Now, I've started with a particular limit, the limit as x goes to 2 from the right. And, and why did I even choose to investigate that limit? Well, the reason was that if I look up here at the rational function, the x minus 3 divided by x minus 2, I see that there is a division by 0 occurring at x equal to 2. And that makes me think that perhaps the value of x equal to 2 is a problem for this particular function, something I want to investigate. So I'm going to do this limit first, and we're going to investigate a couple other limits. And finally, we're going to figure out all the vertical asymptotes, all the horizontal ones, and come up with a graph of this function. All right, so how do I actually investigate this limit first? When I look at this, I notice that it's a composition of two different functions. There's an outside function, the e to the whatever, and then there's an inside function, this quotient, this x minus 3 over x minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do, knowing that the exponential function is a continuous function, is I'm going to investigate the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of the inside function. So let me do that. I'm going to look at this. All right, so here I'm investigating the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of this rational function. Now, what I notice is, let's look at the denominator first. So if I go and look at the denominator, well, here we have an x minus 2, and I'm plugging in a value of 2. But it's, it's not just 2 exactly, it's 2 from the right. So this is a value like 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. So for all of those values from the right, this is going to be very close to zero, but close and positive. So I'm going to say that this looks a little bit like, I'm going to figure out the numerator in, the, in, the, in a moment, but for the denominator, it looks like zero, but zero from the right, a little bit positive. Okay, well now let's investigate what happens in the numerator. This is pretty simple. I plug in two, I get two minus three. This is going to be a negative value, so negative one. And I put this in quotation marks because I, I'm not being rigorous here, but I'm just demonstrating what the basic form of the top and the bottom is. Okay, so what is this going to be? If you have a negative number on the top, a positive on the bottom, and because it's a zero on the bottom in particular, it's spiking to infinity, and our only task is it plus infinity or minus infinity. Because of the negative, because of the positive, this is going to end up being minus infinity. All right, so that was the inside. Now I want to go all the way back to the original where I want to look at e to this particular power. In other words, what I'm effectively looking at is e to the minus infinity because I know that the inside is tending towards minus infinity and so I want to investigate what e to the negative infinity is. Well, what's that? Here I just have to remember what the graph of e to the x is in order to be able to answer this. And the graph of e to the x looks a little something like this. It starts all the way down here, getting very close to zero, and spikes off like that. So this is the graph of e to the x. Okay, well now we can answer it. What's the e to the minus infinity? Well, I'm on the graph of e to the x, but I'm looking over here at minus infinity. It's getting closer and closer and closer to zero, and so we can say that this is going to be equal to zero. All right, so that was one limit I might care about. The limit as we go to two from the right, and it turns out it's not a vertical asymptote. This limit is just zero. Next up, I'm going to look at the same place, two, that's the same problem spot that we have, but now I'm looking at two from the left. Now, does that make a big difference? And it turns out that it's going to make a really big difference in this particular case. Well, why is that the case? Let's do the same computation we just did here for the inside. We would start here, but now instead of the plus, I'm going to have a minus sign. Okay, so I've written that down. And if I do my sort of what does this look like in terms of positive and negatives, well, on the top, I'm going to go and plug in this particular value of 2. I still get the minus 1 as I did before. But now look what happens on the bottom. I'm plugging in 2, but 2 from the left. So a number like 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. So if I subtract 2 from all of those, they're getting really close to 0, but from the left. So I'm going to write a 0, and I put this little minus sign up here to denote that it's coming from the left. And then a division by zero is plus or minus infinity, but we have to adjudicate whether it's positive or negative. 
because I've got a minus and another minus, I can say that this is going to be infinity. Okay, so the inside changes a little bit. It went from being minus infinity in the first case to plus infinity in the second case. So then when I come and investigate this, what we're going to have, this is just going to be the same thing as an e to the power of plus infinity this time. I go and take a look at what that's going to look like on the graph as I go to positive infinity. It is spiking to positive infinity, and so indeed this is going to be positive infinity. So now we can claim that there is indeed a vertical asymptote at this particular point of x going to 2 from the left. Even though from the right it was going to a finite number 0, from the left it goes to infinity, so we have a vertical asymptote. So those were the vertical asymptotes, but what about the horizontal asymptotes? A horizontal asymptote is what happens at either plus infinity or minus infinity. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take first the limit as we go to positive infinity of the same function, and then in a moment I'll do negative infinity. And it's the same idea. There's the outside function, there's the inside function, and because e to the x is continuous, I'm going to go and do the inside function first and feed that into the outside function. So let me write that down. Rational functions, quotients of polynomials, are actually pretty easy to compute limits at plus or minus infinity. When I look at this, I say, what's the highest power of x on the top? What's the highest power of x on the bottom? And in this case, it's actually relatively straightforward. There's x to the power of 1 on the top and x to the power of 1 on the bottom. The highest power is the same, and so I look at the coefficients. The coefficient of the first x is 1, the coefficient of the second x is 1, and so this infinite limit is just equal to the value of 1. So now that I know the inside, I can come along and I can feed it in up here. If I have this e to the power of whatever that's going to be, well, that goes to 1. So this is e to the 1, and so e to the 1, or in other words, e. And so we have this one horizontal asymptote. It's got the equation y, because it's a height, y equals e, and that is the horizontal asymptote at positive infinity. Well, what about negative infinity now? It's got the same inside here, but it would be at minus infinity. But does that change anything? I don't think so. This is just an x over an x. The highest powers, they cancel. It's one either way. So indeed, the infinity that I had here, I can replace it with plus or minus infinity. Either way, this happens to equal one. Note that this is not always the case. Uh, if I had something like, for example, a square root here, it could be the case that limit of positive infinity and minus infinity were different. But in this case, they're both 1, and then if I feed this into here, it's going to be e to the 1, and so I'm going to get the value e to the 1, or in other words, e. So I've got these two different horizontal asymptotes. All right, so summarizing the four limits we've computed, we saw that when we took 2 from the right, it was a finite number, 0. When it was 2 from the left, it was a vertical asymptote, infinity. And then when we took the horizontal asymptotes, either positive infinity or minus infinity, either of them gave the value of e. So we had these horizontal asymptotes at y equal to e. So what would the graph of this thing look like? Okay, I'm going to bring it up here. This is the graph. Notice what happens first at 2. When I'm coming from the right, so I'm coming over here from the right, it goes right down and hits the value of 0. Well, that's what we expected. Not a vertical asymptote, it's just a, a finite value, the value of 0. But then if I come over here from the left, as I'm going towards 2, so going towards 2 but from the left, I actually do indeed get that vertical asymptote. So I get the vertical asymptote from the left, even though from the right, it's just going down to 0. Okay, what about the horizontal asymptotes? Well, you can sort of see, we might not be quite zoomed in enough, it seems it's just sort of flattening it out, flattening out this value that looks like two point something or other. Well, it's quite believable that as you go larger than just the six that we see here, that's going to level out at the value of e. Same as we go down here, it's going to eventually level out at the value of e. We have this two different horizontal asymptotes on both sides equaling e. Knowing when a limit happens to be equal to infinity, that is a vertical asymptote, or Knowing what the horizontal asymptotes are, that is, when the limits go to plus or minus infinity, it allows you to have a really nice sort of big picture of the shape of the graphs. Simply knowing these sort of four pieces of information tells us quite a lot about the basic shape of the graph and is very invaluable for us to quickly understand what's going on in a function.